What's up, everybody? Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have an album review for you, and one that I have been anticipating mainly because this band has been absent for the last five years, and I have grossly missed them. So we are going to go over the latest offering from Horrendous, Ontological Mysterium. I got that right in the first try. Good Boy, job. I don't know. I'm going to fuck up all the other <laughs> song titles, but you know. Oh, well, most surely. Yeah. This also comes out on the 18th of August on Season Miss Records. This band formed in 2009 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I believe they also had members from South Carolina and or Virginia too, but we'll just say Philadelphia. This is their fifth album overall. Again, five years since their last album, Idol, which I believe was on my first ever uh, year-end list back in 2018. Absolutely fantastic album. I've been a fan of this band since their album, The Chills. and. One of the coolest things about this band is they have been slowly evolving over time. They started off as almost more of a straightforward HM2 worship death metal act and have slowly started to become more of a progressive death metal act. And I think over the last five years, they have fine-tuned the progressive side of them and uh, come out with the most different album they have done yet. Like this... Still sounds like horrendous, but man, is this on a whole other level. This is my first, I guess, full exposure to this band. I know I've heard them passing. I, I know yeah. I have. But this is a full-on fucking masterpiece from a progressive standpoint. Just amazing. Uh, I'm going to gush a bunch about this. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt because holy shit. Yeah. Even me being a longtime fan of this band and, you know, going over the singles they dropped, namely the uh, title track, which that odd quirky riff has been stuck in my head since I watched the very trippy video they had for it. This is still like well beyond what I expected as far as technicality, songwriting. It, it's on another level even for them. And that is not to say any of their previous work is you know, uh, fucking, you know, like knuckle dragging, you know, dumb bullshit. It's not. It's fucking really insanely good. It's just, this album's on something else. And I, I don't know what it is. A combination of like mescaline mushrooms and being launched headfirst into a black hole in space, being greeted by a tentacled fucking Lovecraftian god. I don't. I, <laughs> all these things should not be ruled out, but. This album is absolutely insane. The opening track, The Blaze, you know, I saw it was, you know, a two minute song. I was like, all right, is this going to be the intro? And well, it kind of is, but man, um, it, it's a really interesting intro and it's musical and it sets up namely all the things that you are going to get. Well, kind of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. It also sets you into the production here, which was actually done by a guitarist vocalist Damian Herring in the band. And man, he did an amazing yeah, job. Yeah, man, great mix. Guitars are full and present. The vocals sit so well in this album, even when they're in the distance, you can still hear them. Like, the, I mean, the vocals are all over the map, yeah. and we're going to get into that. But like, the vocals sit perfectly, the drums sit perfectly in the mix, the, the bass, mwah. Yeah. Fucking chef's kiss. Just, man. Yeah. I, it, it, as this song goes on, it slowly starts building. Like, you get some, like, weird chugging. And the vocals on here, this song in particular, are weird because all of them are in the back. And it's more like chatter. It's yeah, distant muttering. spoken chatter. Like, you can't really make out what he's saying, but it's there at the same time. It offers this kind of weird presence to the the song it, it it's almost like setting you up for the insanity that will ensue and you get some really cool epic harmonies and that leads us into the next track which we're going to go in order for at least these two because one sets up the other for damn sure and what's the name of that second track <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh, give it a whirl christ hold on chrysopoeia Chrysopoli? I, I don't know. The Archaeology uh, of Dawn. Yes, that's what it is. I, I'm not real certain what that first word is, but I mean, it starts... I, I've never seen it before. Yeah, me either. This is my first time. <laughs> this is my first time. Uh, big thrashy riffs, very high energy, D-beat, 
and again, the start to this song kind of makes it seem more straightforward as it starts. Like it, it doesn't allude to what's going to happen next. Honestly, it was this song and uh, maybe Cult of Shadoa. Maybe that's how you say Shadoa, that. Shadoa, Shadoa. I don't know. A tentacled creature you feed virgins to, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, those are probably the ones that were the most familiar in terms of what I was used to from this band. And then as this first song, whatever the hell that word is, I don't know. Uh, the Archaeology of Dawn, we'll go ahead and call it that. All of those words are easier to pronounce than the main one. But as that song keeps going, it keeps kind of unfurling itself in different layers. The guitar leads all over the song are just absolutely insane. You get that thrashy star kind of gets it going, like it's very energetic. And then, you know, it just gets weirder, more technical. You get more off time drums. And this is where you really start hearing all this cool bass work. Mm. The bass oh work in God. here is absolutely fantastic and contributes as much to the melody as the guitars do. And the guitars are supplying tons of great harmonies killer leads just great melodic riffs like i'm kind of surprised at how melodic this album is because on one hand this is definitely one of the most melodic albums they've put out but it's also their most progressive and at the same time it still packs a brutal punch when it needs to bass work actually reminds me a lot of dan briggs from between the buried and me like really smooth but really technical and weaves in and out of the melody while still creating its own melodic force. But yeah, the album has some unbelievably awesome melodic hooks on here. Uh, Preterition, Preterition, whatever that is, Preterition Hymn, that has some very like classic later death harmonies on it, mm -hmm. a very steady groove to it, big epic harmonies on it. Like it, it's a very melodic song, actually I would say one of the most melodic songs I've ever done, but on their proggier side, some of these more transitional tracks, I guess you could call them, like Aurora Neoterica, sure, and Exogenesis, they put the you know, one of the parts of the word in parentheses, I don't know, it's, it's prog, you just do weird things with words. Both those songs are very focused on music. Um, Aurora Neoterica doesn't have vocals. Yep. Um, it just reminded me of like a proggy L.A. noir kind of bass thing. Actually, you hear a lot of like jazz fusion elements mm -hmm. come in there and clean guitars. Like that one doesn't really have a lot of like heavy, you know, chunky guitars. Now you actually have more melody carried by the bass, some synths in there and clean guitars. Honestly, it kind of reminded me of like 80s Rush a little bit. And Exogenesis goes full spacey weirdness with like sort of a primacy sort yeah, of funky rhythm to primus, it. Primus but with heavier guitars. If if Lair really laid on chugging and um just a heavier presence, it would be that. But the the jam itself, that spacey atmosphere, because it's very bass driven. Oh yeah. Um straight up primus. Yeah. I mean if if Larry was channeling like his early possessed years. Yeah. And just kinda made this one a little bit darker. The uh robotic vocals on mm -hmm, it are mm -hmm particularly haunting and, and man atmosphere is such a huge thing in here because this feels as cosmic and as weird as these songs are constructed it's very spacey there's weird synths the vocals as we were bringing up yeah they move around a lot on this album sometimes they're way in the back like a, a shout or a like you know kind of evil chatter sometimes they're being yelled at you like cult of shad -ua, or whatever it is mm. uh yeah there's like this sort of desperate pleading and yelling. And then towards the end of that song, they get like way more maniacal and twisted. Hell, on uh, the last track, the death knell ringeth, because it sounds fancier if you put the F. Ringeth? Of, yeah, well, yeah, of course. It does. Ringeth. He kind of sounds like Tom G. Warrior a little bit. <laughs> like, he, he doesn't do the ooh, but he sounds like Tom G. Warrior a little bit. So the whole vocal dynamic thing, and there are two vocalists on here, it's this sort of constant ebb and flow to keep these songs strange and aloof and odd, but again, really fucking catchy. Especially the last track, the, the ending, dude. That riff at the end, they dry hump that riff for quite some time, and that is super fucking catchy and groovy and bouncy and just like, man. And these fuckers, they even throw in a false ending on that song just when you think it's over. No, just kidding. In fact, 
they end up playing out that bouncy groove into a more full kind of groove progression. And it's really sweet. Uh, dude, the, the breakdown on the title track, on Ontological Mysterium, dude. Woo. Man, dude, Woo. that riff is so odd. And mm -hmm. I, I, it's been stuck in my head again since I started jamming it. It's like a weird collaboration between like bands like you know, Botch, Dillinger, Escape, Planet, Converge with like Death, Atheist, and Cynic. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. all you guys have to work together and it has to sound like all of you working together. And that is somehow the riff. It's weird. It's a little bit heavier and a little bit darker than I would say, you know, some of the other songs in here. And man, it, it's just, I don't know. It kind of matches the video. Like if you watch the video with all its weird cosmic effects and, you know, trippy hallucination kind of weirdness in it. Yeah, no, it, it syncs up entirely too well. Mm -hmm. The main thing though, that I loved about this, you know, outside of, you know, well, everything, um, <laughs> is the fact that this is flashy, shows off a ton of musicianship, but at no point does it come across as, like, wankery. No. Like, th these, this is more about, like, the song structure here and, like, creating these very cool, very individual songs because as this does really work together as an album, like, incredibly well, it flows beautifully, the songs all stand out. They all have yep. unique characteristics about them, and that is due to the musical flair that they put on them with, you know, weird bass lines, guitar harmonies, leads, bringing in thrashy sections, bringing in, like, more progressive sections, being more melodic, being more brutal. There's so many cool dynamics going on here, and they are employed so well. And at no point does it feel like just pretentious and weird and self-indulgent. It sounds cohesive and, well, kind of insane, but like in the good way. Which is crazy because it reminds me a lot of Voivod, but not necessarily as disjointed as Voivod. Like, as far as the structure is concerned, it's very Voivod, but it seems more put together because they revisit a lot of riffs. They bookend a lot of melodies. When they do things like leads, it all, like, fits and flows well versus the confusion you would get from Voivod. Like, the fuck is happening? I don't even know how to bang my head. There's a lot going on, but it doesn't seem congested. Yeah. No, there's space for all this shit to breathe. Like even in a song like Neon Leviathan, which I'd say has probably more Voivod on it than mm -hmm. any other song on here. It's a little bit more crazy, a little bit more dissonant, kind of scattered, and there's like a punky sort of double time DB to it. When they get down to like some different sections and kind of break it down a bit, there is space for all this stuff to breathe. And these songs are busy. Like there's a lot of stuff going on, but you're able to pick it out and I think that is due to the songwriting and also, again, kind of due to the production too because the production allows everything to breathe. Like everything mm -hmm. is very cleanly separated, but it sounds very organic. It doesn't sound overproduced mm -mm. at all. And what's even cooler is just when you think the songs are gonna go off the rails, they find a way to draw you back in, to give your brain a little bit of time to catch up. Like the start-stop motif in Chrysopoeia, the archaeology of dawn i don't know if i'm saying that right but there's like a a, a cool start stop riff that kind of gives your brain a moment to catch up or when the time signature is off because it's off in most of this like they find a way to like chug up that riff a little bit to bring you back in like okay here's where we're going you don't get that in a lot of music especially prog because it prog does tend to run off the rails a little bit and you find yourself being confused but they always do a good job to bring you back in yeah and with the constantly shifting rhythms and guitar riffs and you know vocal cadences like this could have been like a real congested mess like because th this is it busy and wild but man like they know how to anchor on a spots and surprisingly you know there's a lot of solid grooves in here just to headbang to mm -hmm. and when you're being greeted with absolutely maddening music you kind of need those moments to really kind of center yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as for negatives i don't have any in fact, the only negative that I can say whatsoever is pronouncing some of these fucking song titles. Yeah, yeah. But then again, I get it. If you're going to write a crazy song, why not name it something crazy? Um, Chris, Chris, Chrysopopia? Chris, Chris, Chrysopopia? That sounds like something you go to a restaurant and you have to talk to the chef specifically to get that meal. Yep. Like, you know, if, if you can't pronounce it right, they kick you out. <laughs> or they, or it's a really nice restaurant and they have flowers on the table and you're like, what are these? And they're like, oh, that's a Chrysopopia. Oh, can we eat that? 
No, don't eat it. It's poisonous. Oh, um, cool. I don't have grapes. So often when we review stuff, I find myself uh, with a grape, and I don't have one. Not not a single one. Um, overall, I don't do this often, but holy fuck, man, was this record a good time. I'm going to give this five stars. To me, it's musical perfection. Like, dude, the drum work is insane. The guitar riffs are entertaining and weave all over the place and they're beautiful uh, some, sometimes it's heavy and sometimes it's really super fucking pretty the harmonies are great dude the bass work is once again mwah, good job on the bass work it, it's entertaining the songs are incredible there wasn't a moment where i wasn't fully engaged like they they had me they, they had me pretty much from the get-go uh especially because the way it started it didn't allude to this like it's just, it's great. I can't really say anything more than that. I had a great goddamn time listening to this album, and I can't wait to hear it again. And, uh, you know, even if you're not a fan of prog, man, dude, holy crap, is this entertaining. I feel like I'm running out of words, but, man, uh, if you're a fan of Cynic and Voivod and White Ward and Haken and Primus and Death and, man, all the greatest pieces of music I think that are out there. This is definitely there, so it's a five for me, gentlemen. Great fucking job. I am still hesitant about giving out a five-star review, but this is a four and a half, an easy four and a half. You know, if I did other fractions, it would be like four and nine-tenths. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. It's a four and a half. This is absolutely amazing, and honestly, it could be their best piece of work yet. I was initially kind of thrown off by how much this band had shifted and I would say grown from the last one. I love their more, you know, nasty death metal side and that is definitely on display here. But man, the songwriting on here is just amazing. Like it is very creative, very atmospheric, uh, technical as hell, but it doesn't come off as pretentious. I'm pretty much just echoing everything I already said, and uh, it's it's hard to come up with other descriptors other than, wow. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely love this one. I mean, if you're a giant fan of you know, like Cynic, Atheist, Death, but also, again, like Voivod, Rush, uh, I don't know, think of some other crazy fucking bands that are just, just weird and all over the place, like BT Bam, there's yeah. like some twisted... You know, in terms of like shifting and transitioning, like there's definitely some stuff on there that is like, you know, on a dime and just going into the next weird thing they're doing. This is just absolutely spellbinding. And again, for me, technical, you know, metal can get a little, you know, bit much sometimes. This doesn't, and it's technical as hell. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just marvelous songwriting and, I mean, a, a band that is on a creative fucking peak right now. And again, this steady evolution, maybe this is what it was all leading to. Uh, an absolutely bonkers fucking listen mm. that uh, might have molested my brain a little bit. But I am willing to let it do that again because I'm going to buy this. I'm going to listen to it a lot because this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Check this out. This might be one of my favorite death metal releases that has come out this year, and there's been a lot of killer death metal, so don't take that lightly. Check this out. So if you like this review, give it a thumbs up, because we do stuff like this all, all the time. time. We're also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there is a link below. It's usually in thrallsofmetal.com, but thrallsofmetal.com is under construction right now. We are waiting for new shirts, I think, pretty much, to put it back up. And I saw the email today. They are nearing the end of production on those shirts, so we should have them really fucking soon. We also have a couple shows coming up, one we booked and one we're promoting. Uh, first and foremost, August 20th at Howard's Club H in Bowling Green, Ohio. If you are in the Toledo area, much like we are, or in the tri-state area coming from Detroit, come on out. We got Narcotic Wasteland, Mutilatred, Cadaverous, and Axioma. 20 bucks day of show at the door, 15 in advance. I mean, you're running out of time by the time you see this. And then on October 1st at Frankie's, that's right, if you're from this area at all and you're into metal, I would guarantee that at least once in your life you've been to Frankie's. If you have it's one of our favorite hometown venues that has just reopened. Um, hooking up with the guys there to at least be able to promote shows on October 1st. Revocation, Unearth, Entheos, and High Command. 
don't miss out on that show. Don't miss out on either of these shows, but I mean, it's the return of Frankie's. We grew up in that venue. I've seen hundreds of shows there. It is a great place. We're just thankful to be a part of being able to promote this and whatnot. Uh, I'm stoked to have music in our hometown since we travel a lot for yes. shows. But yeah, that's that. And last but not least, thank you guys for tuning in, for subscribing, for continuing to watch us as we continue to review albums and do all the wonderful things that we do here in Thralls of Metal. We could not do it without you guys. Uh, this has become a gigantic portion of our lives. I look forward to being able to do this, as does my co-host here. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, 100%. Thank you so much. I'm going to let him thank you because I can't have all the thanks. Although, thank you. Oh, I got a big old thank you for you. Oh, my goodness. Now would be the time <laughs> to click off. <laughs> no, but seriously, thank you all once again, and we will catch you later.